All right, hello. Thank you for joining me um, in this presentation on using art as a coping skill. My name is Kate Nettles. I'm a social work intern at Doran Valley West Outpatient Behavioral Health in West Valley City, Utah, and an MSW student at the University of Utah. So thanks for joining me. So first, let's kind of set the agenda of what this video is going to look like, um, what we're going to cover. So first, we're going to do a little bit of background, show some research on the benefits of using art as a coping skill. Then we're going to educate on the concept of creative flow and what that looks like. Then the whole process that we're going to use is called Open Studio. So we're going to explain what that means, what that looks like for a little bit before we jump into it. Then do a quick mindfulness exercise to kind of center us before we jump in. Then we're going to go ahead and go for it and do the open studio activity, which will be more self-paced since this is a video. All right, so first let's talk about the different types of art. We got music, film, dance, visual art, and poetry. Obviously these are not all of the types of art, but um, this is what's kind of come up in the literature and um, what I've noticed to be very beneficial for people. Today we're going to focus mostly on visual art. We are going to have a, um, a writing section um, in this open studio process, but mostly we're going to focus on visual art. But obviously all of these can be beneficial for um, using them as coping skills. Who is this beneficial for? So individuals with mental health issues, individuals experiencing grief or loss, elderly and dementia patients, children, chronic pain patients, disaster relief, substance use disorders, and trauma. Um, these are just the um, groups of people who um, are present in the research of what I found. Obviously, I think that um, art can be beneficial for anyone to use um, as a coping skill, but these are just kind of what popped up in the research. Some themes in my research. It allows us to connect with our inner self and gain new insights. Art helps us develop and gain a sense of achievement, can help us help take us to a safe place, can help us communicate what we're feeling, connects our body and mind. So let's start with connecting with our inner self and gaining insights. So it's kind of like mindfulness or a meditative process, flow, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, it connects to this intuitive side of us. Um, once we're involved in making art, we can better resolve inner conflicts and problem solve. It really helps us to um, dig deep inside ourselves and be able to um, process things better in that way. Um, we can realize what we need to move forward. Sometimes we um, are stuck. We find ourselves stuck in a place and we aren't able to um, know what we need to move forward using words or just thinking about it. And so using art can kind of help us realize that. We can reflect and um, it can be a very perspective taking process, um, again, kind of externalizing that and um, helps us to look inside ourselves and gain some insights into what we need. And it can also increase emotional awareness, acceptance of emotion and meaning making. So um, the next one is the sense of achievement. So by definition, when creating art, we're ending up with a, some sort of product, whether that's a paper that you've painted on, um, a, a song that you've written or played. Um, it may not be pretty and it may not be tangible like that music I was just talking about, but you created something. And um, this act of creating and producing something can give us a sense of accomplishment and achievement, um, can be a motivational force when we don't feel at our best. So the idea of being able to motivate ourselves to create something, um, it's tangible proof that kind of you, um, you process something, you did something. Um, so I encourage you to think about how might this be beneficial for your life? How can this sense of achievement be helpful for you? The next thing is it takes us to the safe place. So it provides an escape, um, a sense of comfort and relief and belonging. Art does not discriminate. Um, anyone can create. It's kind of a shared human experience. So um, that's part of taking it to a safe place. It's hard to feel um, left out or um, lonely with the art. 
Flow also increases focus, which we'll um, touch on later. Takes us to this safe place by um, focusing on just the art. It can also help us stay engaged without a threat to survival. So it can engage us with whatever we're struggling with, takes us out of our head, um, and places the emotions on the page, which um, can be a lot easier to um, kind of to stomach than talking about it. I think we can be a lot more free to express whatever we're going through if it's on paper in front of us. Next thing is it helps us communicate what we're feeling. So it's a way to express emotions and thoughts that we may not be able to express with words. Um, it can communicate our struggle with others in a different and possibly deeper way. Just like this Georgia O'Keeffe um, quote says, I found that I could say things with colors and shapes that I couldn't say any other way, things I had no words for. Sometimes our art speaks for itself. Sometimes um, that's just what we need is to be able to kind of have this physical representation of what we're going through. And we can relate to and gather things from other people's art and vice versa as well. So we can gain things from others and they can gain things from our art and um, create the sense of community and communicate our struggles with each other as well. Specifically in patients with dementia, according to one article I read, um, using art helps improve communication and engagement with others. So obviously it's very beneficial and especially in patients with dementia, that can be really tricky. Um, it can make difficult topics easier to express and talk about as well. Um, this is kind of what Georgia O'Keeffe is getting at. Um, it makes things easier to talk about, easier to, like I said earlier, easier to stomach. It can help translate things into words that we really um, couldn't figure out how to express. And um, other times art just speaks for itself. Um, it can facilitate verbal discussion as well. So maybe you create this art piece and it helps you express how you're feeling into words. And maybe just creating the art is all you needed and you don't you don't need to um, talk about it in words. Um, the last theme here is the mind-body connection. So art evokes this, um, both bodily sensations and emotions um, using your arms, using whatever um, art medium you are using to physically um, convey that emotion. Um, it's a physical manifestation of our mental activity. So it involves movement and sensory experience and expression um, and creative therapies integrate all these things with processing to be able to um, get at kind of the root of what's going on instead of um, one of those two, it integrates all of them. And last thing, pleasure is connected to sensory experiences. So working with our materials, having that sensory experience can make difficult content more tolerable, as we've talked about before. So all these things coming together can um, really help us to express what we're feeling. So we talked about flow a little bit already. So what the heck is that? Um, have you ever been so entranced in an activity, usually something creative, that time just seems to fall away? Um, this is what a lot of people say. Um, is being in the zone. So maybe you're playing your guitar and all of a sudden two hours has gone by and you've um, playing this one song for two hours and you don't realize that. So what else falls away? This sense of um, the fear of failure, sense of time, um, this mind wandering, your cognition, all of these things fall away and um, it leaves room for intuition, creation and inspiration. So how is this beneficial to us? It decreases cognitive activity, so it help, can help clear your head. Um, research has shown it's actually very similar to what happens when you sleep. So it can be really helpful for your um, brain to kind of reset, to kind of um, take a step back from everything that's going on in your head. It increases self-esteem. Um, benefits include learning and growth. It can teach us to be able to follow our intuition and connect more with our inner self as well. So if we can cultivate this idea of flow and um, experience it more often, we can follow our, learn to follow our intuition more and connect with, connect with our inner self, which was our first theme that came um, up from the research. And this idea of hypofrontality. So this basically means the shutting down of the prefrontal cortex. If you don't know what the prefrontal cortex is, it's the part of the brain that um, humans have that mammals don't. So this includes like abstract thought. Um, this is where a lot of your um, like uh, self-deprecating thoughts, um, perseverating on certain thoughts, 
those kind of things. A lot of those thoughts are coming from our prefrontal cortex. Um, so shutting that down really connects us with what we're doing in um, kind of a primal sense. It takes away um, those things that make our life really hard, honestly. And that's why we can really focus on learning growth and increase our self-esteem. All right, so moving on to the open studio process, let's kind of overview what that's gonna look like before we dive into it. So first thing is intention setting. So this is kind of a grounding. Um, it focuses our art making. Uh, we're gonna consider what we're thinking and feeling in this moment. So what do you need today? Take a second to um, think about that and think about why you're gonna make art today. So it's gonna be a present tense statement. So you're gonna write it down. These are two very important things. It's gonna be first person. Here are some examples. You can use one of these or you can make up your own, but it's really important to write it down um, somewhere near you. Maybe it's on the back of your piece of paper, whatever, um, but really take some time and consider what um, you want to get out of this art making session. Next thing is the art making. So try to focus only on you. Obviously, if you're doing this in an individual um, setting, that's gonna be a little easier. Uh, let the art lead you. So whatever feels right, just go with it. It doesn't have to be pretty, that is not the point. If you um, never look at this again, that is completely fine. Again, it's completely for you. Keep your intention in mind as well. If that's not where your art goes, that's completely okay too. Just kind of let it lead you whatever um, whatever feels right. Just go with that. Let's remember this is solely for the purpose of helping you cope. So this usually is done in a group setting. Um, so if you're with a group, just remember that this is about you. This is um, about you and your coping skills. Usually um, 30 minutes is a good um, kind of time period to go with, um, but you can do honestly as much or as little time as you need. The next thing when you're um, finishing up your art is going to be your witness writing. So I want you to sit in front of your art quietly and just notice what it looks and feels like. Um, you can describe in writing what you see as fully as you can without coming to conclusions. So that may um, sound like I see blue water and fish swimming in the blue water, something like that. Um, you can write down any feelings or thoughts, including judgments that come up for you. Um, maybe you feel feel sad um, looking at whatever you created. Um, you can write that down. Maybe you write down, I'm unhappy with how this turned out. Um, anything like that. The next thing, which is probably my favorite, is the dialogue with the image or a part of the image. So write it down as it comes, including any seemingly extraneous thoughts or tangents. Um, you can... This may sound silly, but you can, yeah, just have a conversation with your art. Maybe you want to say, hey, um, you really helped me realize some things. Or um, maybe you want to talk to it about how angry you are at it. Um, whatever feels right, again, um, try and do whatever you think is going to help you. Um, you can also check in with your intention. Ask your image what it has to do with your intention. So you can do as um, few or, or as many of these as you want. Usually a good um, witness writing session is like 10 minutes. And a lot of people like to kind of like post their art up on the wall so that they can kind of step back and look at it, um, kind of like in a gallery. Um, but again, like whatever you want to do is fine. You can write for as long or as short amount of time as you want. Next thing is sharing. Um, obviously, if you are in a individual setting, this part is a little bit more difficult, but you could um, share it with a family or friend, um, share it on social media, whatever you wanna do. Um, remember again, this is for you. You can share as much or as little as your art or writing as you want. An important part of this is this idea of compassionate disinterest. Um, so there's no interpretations or comments. Um, we don't care what's going on with someone else's art, um, but we're holding space for that. So this is a judgment-free zone. Um, this includes yourself. Uh, when you come up to share, don't comment or um, anything like that on your own work or writing. Um, and then as a group, if you are in a group setting, um, the group's job is to hold space for whatever is shared. Um, you don't know what's going to about to come out of someone's mouth and we just want to hold space for whatever does come up. 
obviously this can be 10 minutes or as long as needed for whoever all wants to share. Like I said, this is a judgment-free zone of yourself and others. Obviously we're human, so we're not gonna deny that those judgments are there, but um, I just encourage you not to speak them aloud. Um, some examples of judgments. Um, I'm not an artist, hear that one a lot. Your drawing is beautiful, this is terrible, that's really pretty. So even those positive judgments, like your drawing is beautiful, that's still a judgment. Um, so we discourage that. Some alternatives to this are just stating what you notice or see. So maybe I see an ocean with fish in it. I see lots of blue on your paper. I notice you drew some mountains. Those are some good examples of um, comments you can make that um, don't include judgment. The next thing is the no comment rule. This really only applies to um, groups. So if you're in an individual setting, feel free to skip past this. Um, please refrain from commentary and dialogue with others during this entire process. Again, this is totally for you. So please don't talk to each other while you're doing this. Um, Next, is this is particularly important during sharing. Um, side comments or any sort of like conversations um, is the opposite of holding space for what's coming up. So I just encourage you to, again, like focus on yourself in this situation. This also includes comments about your own work. So if you um, come up to share, um, I discourage you from saying, I drew blank, or this is my bad drawing of blank. I wrote about blank. Um, just read what you wrote or share what you created, um, free of commentary. I don't need you to tell me what you drew, uh, because I'll be looking at it, um, if we're obviously in the same room. Um, but yeah, just share exactly what you read or, um, created and, um, leave the commentary out. So, um, let's create this space. So again, everyone here is an artist, no judgments. I think there's a lot of judgment on what does being an artist mean, but the fact that we can all create, that means we're artists. So let's lean into that. Next thing is there's no good or bad, beautiful or ugly, taking that judgment out of it. You have the right to your creation, so you get to decide what you share. And let's be respectful, you don't know what your neighbor may be going through or creating for. So that's that part of the no comment rule. Um, focusing on only on yourself because you don't know um, who else is going through something in that room. Allow yourself to follow where the art takes you and do what feels right. Follow that creative source. Um, let yourself go and just kind of enjoy where that creation takes you. So we're just gonna start with a mindfulness exercise if you guys wouldn't mind. All right, so this is a meditation guide from the New York Times. You're about to listen to a one minute mindfulness meditation by Tara Brack, a psychologist and founder of the Insight Meditation Community. So please get comfortable and close your eyes with me. Now listen. Coming into stillness, take some moments to scan through your body and just see what wants to relax and to let go a little. You might take a full deep in breath Filling the chest, filling the lungs in a slow out breath. Feeling the sensations of the breath as you release. And again, a deep in breath and a slow out breath. Letting your breath then resume in its natural rhythm, opening to your senses, feeling the breath in the foreground and relaxing with the background of sensations, sounds, feelings, and life. All right, now I encourage you to go back um, in this video to each of the slides of the um, different sections of this open studio process. Um, you'll start with the intention setting um, and you can pause the video and look at what the guidelines are for each section. So um, you're kind of aware of um, what to do and I encourage you to glance at that as much or as little as you need. Um, but now it's gonna be kind of self-paced as long or as short as you want it to be. Um, the rest of this video is just my references if you, um, like to look at that, but, um, happy creating and thanks for joining me.